Man, what's up with the what's up? It's your boy Tyrone Hunter back in the building with another edition of What's Really Good Entertainment. If you've been rocking with the channel, well, I appreciate you. Shout out to you. I'm going to continue to bring you that fire. If you're checking in for the first time, hit that like button on the way in the door. Hit the subscribe button on the way out the door so you can join the squad. Uh, you see the title, you know my motto, I'm not going to hold you. So today, we go into Fort Greene Projects, uh, Brooklyn, New York. Where we're going to be talking about Diz Capone, a.k.a. Heron, who was murdered in Brooklyn by somebody he knew, murdered in Fort Greene Projects. Um, I'm going to give you the whole story. This story has a lot of twists and turns, and it just goes to show how when you in or live in a street life, there's a lot of twists and turns in it. Um, this video right here is definitely one you want to watch. This is somebody that was very close to me, uh, like a brother. We slept in the same bed, you know, grew up going to church together, and then we hit the streets running. Um, so if you want to hear more about this topic, make sure you hit the like button, share the video, make sure you subscribe, and stay to the end of the video so you can get the full story. But without further ado, let's get right into it. So, this a.k.a. Heron, um, real name Deshaun Heron, was murdered in August of 2002. And here's the article here. Um, as you can see, it say a Brooklyn man died yesterday after he was shot during an argument on the Fort Greene sidewalk, police said. I'm going to read you this article and then we're going to get into the story. Newspaper article reads as follow. A Brooklyn man died yesterday after he was shot during an argument on a Fort Greene sidewalk, police said yesterday. Police heard the shots coming from the street in front of the Ingersoll houses at 11.55 p.m. Saturday. Cops drove to the scene where they saw Kevin Bailey, 30, standing in front of 48 Fleet Walk. Bailey held a 38 caliber pistol in his hand and stood over Deshaun Heron, 25, who lay bleeding on the ground, officials said. The officers arrested Bailey and charged him with murder and weapons possession. Heron, who was shot three times, was rushed to Brooklyn Hospital, where he died early yesterday. Officials said the two gunmen had been arguing when Daly pulled out the gun and shot the younger man. Daly has an arrest record including charges of robbery, weapon possession, and assault. Both men lived in the Ingersoll houses north of Fort Greene Park. Friends and relatives built a small memorial of candles for Heron in front of 162 Navy Walk, where he lived. Now, very sad and very tragic story. Um, Diz, a.k.a. Heron, uh, was killed. And the story is so deep because it just goes to show like how many people and how many lives was affected by this tragedy and like i said when i started the video uh me and diz we was real close growing up we lived in the same building which was 162 navy walk i lived on the second floor he lived on the third floor we spent the night at each other's house all the time um ate off the same plates uh i went to church you know i was going to church with his mother um as we were growing up you know we pretty much came and we came up in the projects together first girlfriends to you know um did our did a lot of our our first our first things together now the interesting part about this story is that before hitting the streets this he was a real cool individual you know i mean he had a couple of fights in in the neighborhood but you couldn't see that he was going to turn into the individual that he turned into and a lot of people know this story, but I'm going to give you a little bit more to the story just to let you know how tragic this particular situation is. So Diz had a brother, his older brother name was Raleigh. Okay. Now the individual that killed Diz, he went by the name Raleigh. Those two were good friends coming up. So the strangeness and the irony of 
Diz getting killed by his brother's friend. It's just sad to say the least. But the story only gets deeper from there. Ralik, who had a child with a female named Shauna. Shauna was killed by another person that we call a friend that we knew. So when Diz died and Ralik went to prison to serve his time for the murder, his child's mother named Shauna, she was also murdered in Four Green Projects, leaving their daughter without a mother or a father to raise herself. I'm not going to put her name out there, but those, you know, that are familiar with her, um, they know who she is. And I just want to say hopefully all is well with her. So those were two people that was affected by this story and this scenario. Not counting Ralik's family, who was affected by the incident, and not counting Diz's family, who was affected by the incident, as well as everybody that had love for Diz. Now... In order for you to understand this particular story, I'm going to have to take you back a little while before this particular incident happened. So as we rewind, there was a situation where Diz, as well as another friend of his, who was also well known in the Fort Green Projects named Cakes, they were alleged to have done something to an individual who was visiting the projects from another area in Brooklyn. Now, the allegations go that they allegedly robbed this individual and the individual came back to the neighborhood seeking retaliation. Now, just to let you know how crazy, how funny, and how treacherous the streets could be, there was a female involved in this particular instance whom the guy who got robbed was visiting. Not going to put her name out there. For those of y'all that know the story, y'all know the story. Now, she grew up with us. And although the guy that got robbed was her boyfriend, but it was alleged that she gave pictures to her boyfriend, um, as well as his people's pointing out Diz and Cakes as the ones that committed the crime. So when the dudes came through the projects with, you know, their peoples to retaliate for that incident, they wind up killing two people. Um, those people go by the names of PJ and Shah G. As a result of PJ and Shah G getting killed, somebody that was real close to them named Pillow, he died and had a heart attack. Now, in the incident when where PJ and Shah G got killed, there was somebody that was chased through the projects up to Myrtle Avenue and they were shot in front of the grocery store. That person goes by the name Ralik. Do it sound familiar? Ralik is the same person that murdered Diz. Ralik is the person that was chased through the project and shot in front of the grocery store because of a situation that Diz and Cakes got themselves into. So if we trace the story back, now we can kind of get an understanding as to where the issues between Diz as well as Ralik came from. So although Diz's brother and Ralik were friends, this situation became deep because Ralik was shot as a result of a situation and an incident that Diz and Cakes were a part of. Now, just to go a little bit deeper, it was a little crew in Four Green Projects at that time. Ralik, Pillow, PJ, as well as Shah G, they was all part of the same clique. So since that incident, there was a lot of animosity brewing between Ralik and Diz. A lot of animosity brewing between them. And 
me, you know, overhearing the, the arguments and the debates that was going on between them, Raleigh thing was, listen, I got shot and my peoples got killed behind some drama and some beef that you had. You need to take care of that situation. Diz, on the other hand, was feeling like, man, listen, you know, um, it is what it is. You know, if you got a problem with me, we can handle that. Raleigh was an older individual. I'm not going to go so far as to say that he was an OG, but he was definitely an older individual, um, you know, that was respected uh, in the hood. And he didn't go out of his way looking for trouble, especially he didn't go out of his way beefing with individuals from the hood from Fort Greene, but because he got shot and a couple of his peoples got killed behind that incident, you know, it was years and years and years of argument and them going back and forth, you know, to the point that Raleigh actually did what it was that he did. Now, as a result of the incident with Cakes and Diz, the individual who they robbed came through the projects on another occasion and he was killed. Cakes was locked up for the incident, but he beat the murder and he served time for a gun while Diz was still running around in the streets. And I believe, you know, um, personally that based on this incident, um, and based on what happened and the fact that Diz got around this case, and it was other things that he was doing as well. He was really in the streets. He was really running the streets. But I think based on that incident, as well as other things that transpired, um, Diz, he started to have kind of like, you know, a superiority complex. Felt like he couldn't get touched. And the crazy thing about, you know, this incident in that particular day is the day that Diz got killed, he had just came out of the hospital from getting shot in the leg. He got shot in the leg because he was running through the projects, allegedly robbing a lot of people. And one individual that they tried to rob pulled out a gun and shot him. And so Diz was actually walking, you know, on a cane that day. He had just came back from the hospital that particular day, you know, that he got murdered. Um, me and Diz, you know, we had an incident, uh, where, you know, those, for those that's familiar with the incident, um, you know, although we grew up together, as we got older, we kind of drifted apart and, you know, we were doing our own thing in the hood, uh, and the incident transpired where allegedly, you know, shots was fired between, um, me and Diz, and that was, you know, a crazy, a crazy incident as well. Those are allegations, um, you know, that me and him got in a shootout and we were shooting at each other in the projects. Um, I'm not going to speak too much on that story. That's uh, allegations. That's, you know, whatever, um, however that goes. But I'm just saying that to say that when it comes to streets, when it comes to the streets, when it comes to street beef, when it comes to people getting shot, when it comes to people getting killed uh, and the way in which they get killed, a lot of times there's a whole lot more to the story than meet the eye. Now, as I said, Diz grew up in the church. I knew, you know, pretty much his whole family. And, you know, we were pretty much like brothers, so much so to the point that we call each other cousins growing up. And... I just feel that, you know, that incident, it could have been avoided. It shouldn't have, you know, went to where it is that it went. This got murdered at 25 years old. His brother was killed as well, you know, and for a mother to lose both of her sons to street violence is, is just crazy, you know, um, and then for somebody like Raleigh to get arrested for this killing, go to prison and, you know, his daughter's mother get murdered is, and leave their daughter out there, you know, to raise herself. 
And when this incident happened, the, the daughter, she she was no more than 10 years old. She was she was less than 10 years old, you know? So this is a real tragic story. Um, and I just wanted to do this profile piece, um, you know, to speak on this story and, and to kind of let people know that in death and through death and when a death occur, it affects a whole lot of people. And a lot of times we don't know the backstory. We don't know how many other lives is affected or what actually led up to that particular incident transpiring. Uh, as you see on the screen is Four Green Projects with the projects in the background. For those of y'all familiar with Four Green Projects, that's the famous bridge that connect the first side to the second side. The individual in the picture um, his name is Mello, and may Mello rest in peace as well. I'm going to do a profile piece on Mello. I'm going to do a profile piece on Cakes. I'm going to do a profile piece on Shauna. You know, may she rest in peace. That was tragic how she was killed as well. And I just want to say to everybody out there that there's more to life than the life that we're living and the life that we chose to live. Um, so for everybody that was affected in this incident, you know, for those that lost their life, I just want to say, um, rest in peace. May they rest in peace. And, you know, my condolences to the family because it was definitely a tragedy. Um, this, he really didn't get an opportunity to live his life. But for those that knew him, um, the life that he lived in, he was definitely on the fast track. And the name Heron, it's a, more, it's a little bit more to that name than people know. Because that name is connected to another big name that people may know. And that individual is currently serving a few life sentences in jail right now. So... I'm going to continue to bring you profile pieces, uh, continue to bring you stories of individuals from Fort Greene that I know and that I grew up with. If y'all didn't, if y'all didn't get an opportunity yet, check out the last video that I did. Um, what up, blood? What up, cuz? What up, gangster? The real story of the original 50 Cent, who was also from Fort Greene Projects. And like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what y'all think of this profile piece. Do you think it's a tragedy? Um, you know, what's your thoughts? What's your feelings on this? Um, do you want me to do more video like this? Until then, everybody stay blessed, stay safe, enjoy the summer, and I wish you well. It's your boy Tyrone Hunter signing off with another edition of What's Really Good Entertainment. Rest in peace to all the former soldiers. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm going to catch you on the next one.